Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone. It's good to be back this week with you and to discuss your fundraising questions and make an attempt to help you as much as I can. Uh, you are part of a growing community of nonprofit leaders who are trying to make a significant difference in our world and even possibly in eternity. And we just thank you for joining us each week. Uh, this is helpful not only for me but also hopefully helpful for you and for the rest of our community so we rely on your questions and always enjoy the questions that i get because i find often that the questions i get are some of the same ones from different people so your questions uh, may also be very helpful for the rest of our community so let's dive right in today to our question for the week our question for the week is from Krista in Champaign, Illinois. And Krista asks, why is asset giving so important versus current giving? Well, Krista, thank you so much for that question. And I've got a number of videos out there that I've done on estate planning, estate design, plan giving. Uh, we did a very popular video last year on the CARES Act. We also have addressed uh, planned giving and especially one of the hottest items, which is a donor advised fund, often referred to as a DAF. Those are very, very popular subjects, not, on, not only on our channel, but on a number of channels out there. And so when we talk about uh, asset giving versus current giving, we're really talking about tapping into the assets that people have versus their current income. Now, most recent statistics that I've seen is that the average individual has anywhere between three and five times their current income in assets. So in other words, if someone is making $50,000 a year, they have the capability of making a gift of a hundred and fifty or even two hundred and fifty thousand dollars based on the assets that they have so that doesn't mean that your individuals are going to be giving all of their assets that they have but potentially they could now when i talk about assets we're talking about things that you have that is uh, that are not part of your current income that's savings that's retirement you are uh, your donors many of your donors are living in a major asset and that's their home and even though their home may be mortgaged to the hilt they do have some of that money had may also be in the in the value and may have already uh, been paid for and may have been appreciated a lot of people in this day and age bought homes in the 1990s, 2000s, and the, uh, the value of that home has, has increased so much, the appreciated value of that, that they could actually take out a loan, and many do for a home, may, may take out home equity lines of credit to get work done, but they could also borrow on the appreciated value of that uh, home and make a donation to your organization. Current giving, as I, as I said, if, if someone had an average income of about $50,000, uh, if they give 10% of that, which uh, the average individual actually gives less than 10%, but we, if we follow a biblical model, which would be 10%, and some may uh, argue and think it's actually 25%, but 10 to 25% of $50,000 would be $5,000. So an individual who makes $50,000 is probably giving to a charity or multiple charities 
about five thousand dollars and uh, in the United States uh, average giving is really probably more two to three percent so five thousand might be a maximum so if you ask someone who makes fifty thousand dollars for a gift in all likelihood you're probably not going to get more much more than five thousand dollars may get ten thousand dollars but not much more however if you ask someone to consider giving a gift out of their assets and not out of their giving, using the principle that I mentioned earlier, that a $50,000 person could have three to five times more money in assets, somebody could potentially give you a gift of between $150,000 and $250,000. Now, once again, as I said, that would be giving of their total assets. But if someone was going to set up an estate or a will, if they were going to give the total amount at death to your nonprofit organization, the total amount of their estate, which would include their assets, you could see a sizable gift from someone who gives out of that. So all that, that I'm saying is that people have a lot more capacity to give when they are considering giving out of their assets versus out of their current income. And it's funny how many individuals never consider giving out of their assets. There are really some significant tax benefits to giving out of assets. Now, it's important that you would send them or encourage them to go to a tax advisor or an attorney for advice on these kinds of things. But I know there are considerable savings between selling some stock that you have and giving the gift to a nonprofit versus just donating the stock to the nonprofit and let the nonprofit sell the stock. There's a significant difference in the tax savings. And so little things like that are so important. Now, I mentioned earlier that there is a tool now called a Donor Advised Fund. And if you're interested in hearing about a Donor Advised Fund, I've got a video right up here that would allow you to hear specifically about a Donor Advised Fund. And I'm getting ready recently, uh, I'm getting ready on April 13th to do a video, to do a webinar with the Fund Easy corporation which is an event software and I'm going to be doing a webinar with Eric Fleshhood of the Crew Foundation and we're going to be talking about the benefits of a DAF. So if you're watching this before uh, April 13th of 2022, please look for that seminar because I think you're going to get some great benefit from that. But Establishing a DAF, establishing a donor advised fund is one of the most creative and powerful tools to take assets, move those assets into a fund that is much like creating a foundation, but it's actually as simple as setting up a savings account. But the money that goes into a donor advised fund is that money is like making a donation at the time it is you get a tax deduction for making a gift to the DAF but you based on the organization whether it's Fidelity whether it's National Charitable Foundation whether it's the Crew Foundation those organizations uh, allow you to have a say in where their money is given and that's money that goes to them from you and to your charity of choice. So you can give to your charity of choice using a DAF, get an immediate tax deduction. You could get make a gift to a DAF on December 31st, get a tax deduction for that gift, and then make gifts to your favorite charity over the next 12 months, monthly, quarterly, annually, and you have already taken your tax deduction, but you can give that to the nonprofit through the DAF over time. So there are some creative ways to give through uh, assets versus current giving. So Krista, I hope that helped for you to understand why asset giving, which opens up the door to greater ways of giving, is so valuable and so important. So I hope you enjoyed that. 
if you've got questions please reach out to us at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java follow us on Facebook we've got a Facebook group development effectiveness strategies a lot of individuals are really uh, giving us good feedback on our Instagram uh, development and fundraising posts you can uh, be uh, follow us on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies, and uh, uh, definitely without um, hesitation, please subscribe to this channel. We are part of a growing community that's making a great difference in our world and in the community, and we'd love for you to join us. And as I always say, we are here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.